Good morning. Uh, this is Team B, and today we are presenting the paper Transaminic Acid for the Treatment of Heavy Menstrual Bleeding. According to the FIGO recommendations that came out in 2011, it was found that certain terms like menorrhagia or the uterine bleeding were not being used properly. There's no regular definition for it. So they came up with a new set of terminologies that define what is normal uterine bleeding and what is abnormal uterine bleeding. According to their recommendations, abnormal uterine bleeding can be classified based on regularity as irregular menstrual bleeding or amenorrhea, based on frequency as oligomenorrhea or frequent bleeding, as heavy menstrual bleeding, heavy prolonged menstrual bleeding and light menstrual flow on the basis of heaviness, shortened or prolonged on the basis of duration, postcoital bleeding or intermenstrual bleeding based on the irregular bleeding patterns. It can also be differentiated based on bleeding outside reproductive age as postmenopausal bleeding or precocious puberty. So what is heavy menstrual bleeding? The NICE guidelines define HMB as excessive menstrual blood loss which interferes with the woman's physical, emotional, social and material quality of life and which can occur alone or in combination with other symptoms. They also define this quantitatively as a menstrual blood loss of more than 80 ml per cycle. Just a revision of what the normal physiology is in a menstrual cycle. You have your hypothalamus which releases your GnRH in a cyclical manner, causing your pituitary to release LH and FSH. Finally, the ovaries to release estrogen and progesterone which gives rise to your normal menstrual cycle. If there's any irregularities in this whole process, uh, either an imbalance in your hormones or a fibroid in your uterus, it can give rise to heavy menstrual bleeding. So the current treatment for heavy menstrual bleeding according to the NICE clinical pathway can be classified based as pharmaceutical, where you have transaminic acid, NSAIDs, oral contraceptive, norethisterone, uh, levonor gestrel releasing IUCD uh, and then you also have the non-hysterectomy surgery which is the endometrial ablation. Other interventions such as uterine artery embolization and myomectomy are based on the etiologies of the heavy menstrual bleeding. Finally, you have hysterectomy which is a definitive treatment for heavy menstrual bleeding. Transaminic acid is one of the most common treatments that are being used for heavy menstrual bleeding. So in today's presentation, we'll be seeing the paper where we see the efficacy of transaminic acid in the treatment of heavy menstrual bleeding. So there are papers that have shown that in women with heavy menstrual bleeding, there is an increased amount of plasmin and plasminogen. This uh, implies that there's an increased amount of fibrinolysis that's going on. So the transaminic acid acts as a competitive inhibitor at the lysine binding site in the plasminogen. Acting here, it prevents the interaction between your plasmin and fibrin, thus decreasing your overall fibrinolysis uh, and thus decreasing your heavy menstrual bleeding. So just a few facts on the pharmacokinetics of transaminic acid. It's not affected by food. The maximum plasma concentration is achieved 2 hours post-dose. It is minimally bound to plasma protein. It is not metabolized in the body and the main elimination route is through the kidneys. So this paper identified 11 randomized controlled trials on the therapeutic efficacy of tranexamic acid in the treatment of heavy menstrual bleeding. The selection criteria was women of reproductive age with regular idiopathic heavy menstrual bleeding and this was either measured quantitatively via the mean blood loss of more than 80 ml or subjective perception of menorrhagia by the women themselves. The primary outcome measure in all of these studies was menstrual blood loss, which was measured either directly by the alkaline hematin method or indirectly via the pictorial blood assessment chart. And tranexamic acid was compared with placebo and other treatment modalities such as the NSAIDs, progestins and the levonorgestrel releasing IUS. 
So several studies compared tranexamic acid with placebo. This is a randomized placebo-controlled uh, double-blind study in which uh, 187 women aged from 18 to 49 years old were given either placebo for day 1 to day 5 of their menstrual cycle versus 1.3 grams of tranexamic acid for day 1 to day 5 of their menstrual cycle. And the menstrual blood loss was measured via the alkaline hematine method. And overall, it was found that tranexamic acid reduced the menstrual blood loss by 26 to 50 percent in comparison to a 2 to 8 percent in placebo groups. Especially in the trial that was in the previous slide, the menstrual blood loss was decreased by 40 percent in the tranexamic acid groups versus 8 percent in the placebo groups. And the menstrual blood loss was also declined to less than 80, 80 ml, which is the definition for heavy menstrual bleeding, in 43 percent of menstrual cycles compared with 17 percent of menstrual cycles in the placebo groups. So several studies also compared tranexamic acid with NSAIDs, uh, in particular flabiprofen and mephanemic acid. So for this trial, um, there were 15 women. Uh, they were given either tranexamic acid 1.5 grams for day 1 to day 3 of the menstrual cycle, compared to other women who were given flabiprofen, 100 mg um, BD for day 1 to day 5 of the menstrual cycle. And this is another trial in which um, women were given tranexamic acid 1 grams, 1 gram 4 times a day for day 1 to day 4, and mephanemic acid 500 milligrams TDS for day 1 to day 4. And overall, um, the findings was that the menstrual blood loss was significantly more decreased with tranexamic acid than with flabiprofen or mephanemic acid. So in uh, comparison with tranexamic acid and mephanemic acid, uh, the menstrual blood loss was decreased by 54% compared to 20%. And in comparison with flabiprofen, the menstrual blood loss was decreased by 53% uh, versus 24%. We also compared transamic acid with etamcilate. Etamcilate is a hemostatic drug that works by vasoconstriction and promoting platelet adhesion through the release of thromboplastin. So 500 mg of etamcilate was compared with 1 gram of transamic acid, and etamcilate showed no reduction in menstrual blood loss. Transamic acid, on the other hand, reduced the mean blood loss by 97 mL more than with etamcilate. Also, 67% of patients taking etamcilate did not wish to continue treatment because of the poor efficacy, while 77% of those taking transamic acid wished to continue. Otherwise, they have similar side effect profile. So another paper compared the role of trans acid uh, with medroxyprogesterone, acetate. And they compared 2 grams of trans acid with cyclical 10 mg of medroxyprogesterone, acetate, for 3 cycles. And they were found to be comparable in reducing menstrual blood loss. However, lack of response was reported in 3 patients with trans acid and 13 patients with medroxyprogesterone. After stopping treatments for 3 months, 66.7% Patients in the trans acid group had recurrence of menorrhagia, while only 50% in the medroxyprogesterone acetate group had recurrence. And more hysterectomies were performed in the medroxyprogesterone group, probably due to patients' discontinued treatment due to the side effects of hormonal therapy like irregular bleeding, nausea, vomiting, bloatedness, etc., and compliance issue with the cyclical usage. So the authors concluded that trans acid is equally efficacious in reducing menstrual blood loss, especially for patients who want to conceive and in whom hormonal therapy is not tolerated. So another study compared trans acid with noradesterone in the treatment of ovulatory menorrhagia. So in this study, they compared 1 gram of trans acid versus noradesterone on days 19 and 26 for two cycles. And they found that trans acid reduced menstrual blood loss by 45%. Uh, while noradesterone increased menstrual blood loss by 20%. Uh, 14 that received trans acid achieved a mean blood loss of less than 80 mL per cycle, which is the definition of heavy menstrual bleeding, but only 2 patients that received noradesterone achieved this mean menstrual blood loss. So the co authors concluded that trans acid is safe and effective in reducing menorrhagia. Noradesterone at this dosage, however, is ineffective in treating ovulatory menorrhagia. One explanation for this is probably because noradesterone is metabolized to an estrogen-like product, which can result in proliferation of endometrium. On the other hand, medroxyprogesterone, which is also a progesterone, is a pure progesterone compound. Also in this study, the noradesterone dosage 
um, is only given on days 19 and 26, which is probably not appropriate for treating heavy menstrual bleeding. So this paper also compared um, trans MA acid with levonorgestrel releasing IUCD. And they found that reduction in menstrual blood loss is actually greater with levonorgestrel releasing IUCD compared to trans MA acid. But IUCD is probably not appropriate for patients that wish to conceive. So um, after we compare the different treatment modalities, we will move on to determine the dosages that is most suitable for trans MA acid. In this paper, the authors compared 1.95 grams versus 3.9 grams of trans MA acid, and they measured three primary efficacy endpoints. So firstly, the menstrual blood loss reduction with trans MA acid is greater than placebo, and is statistically significant. And the menstrual blood loss is also perceived to be meaningful to subjects. And mean menstrual blood loss in patients with higher doses of trans MA acid, like 3.9 grams, is greater than the group with only 1.95 grams, probably suggesting a dose-response relationship. Um, they also measure a secondary efficacy endpoint, which is the improvement in quality of life. This will be mentioned later in the presentation. Otherwise, there are no serious studies related to even higher dosages of trans MA acid used. Uh, the paper also looked at the effect of uh, quality of life uh, in using treatment with uh, trans anexamic acid. Uh, so specifically, they looked at two randomized placebo-controlled double-blind studies. And these studies, they used a validated disease-specific uh, menorrhagia impact questionnaire uh, that were used to assess the effect of trans anexamic acid treatment on the quality of life. Overall, the MIQ scores for limitations in social or leisure activities and physical activities were decreased significantly compared to pl placebo. Uh, in the first of these two studies, uh, Freeman and L uh, used a sample size of 294 patients, uh, and they were administered tranexamic acid for three cycles in two dosage groups. In the first group, uh, they administered 1.95 grams per day for five days, and in the other group, it was 3.9 grams per day for five days. And it was found that the MIQ scores in both groups decreased significantly compared with placebo. In the second study, with a sample size of 187 uh, patients, they used a dosage of about 3.9 grams per day for five days over six cycles. And uh, in this study, they found that the mean MIQ scores for limitations in social leisure activities, physical activities, work outside and inside the home, and cell-perceived menstrual blood loss decreased significantly compa compared with placebo. Uh, they also looked at an open-labeled, uncontrolled study with a uh, sample size of 849 patients with a dosage of about 3 to 6 grams per day for 3 to 4 days over 3 months. Uh, the question, uh, quality of life uh, was assessed with a five-point scale questionnaire. And uh, overall, 81% of participants were satisfied, were very satisfied with the treatment. And 94% perceived their menstrual blood loss to be decreased or strongly decreased. In, in this part of the presentation, I'll be touching on the long-term use of tranexamic acid, specifically focusing on the cost of its treatment tolerability of its use, and also the recommended dosages. So it, to evaluate the use of tranexamic acid as a long-term treatment modality, its side effect profile has to be evaluated. In a paper by Lukes, comparing the use of tranexamic acid versus placebo, there is actually no reported increase in incidence of headache, menstrual cramps, back pain or nausea in both patient groups. Additionally, in a second paper, by Freeman, comparing different dosages of tranexamic acid to placebo, there's actually a mild-reported increase in side effects in 10% of his patients. These side effects were very mild and was associated with increased incidence of viral URTI, fatigue, MSK pain, arthralgia, myalgia, and nasal congestion. Significantly, there was no reported increase in GI side effects in the use of tranexamic acid relative to placebo. Additionally, there has been no reported thromboembolic events in a 19-year observational population-based study. 
So clearly we can see that tranexamic acid is a generally well-tolerated medication with um, mild side effects. The dosage requirements for the treatment of heavy menstrual bleeding are as follows. In Europe, it is recommended to use 1 gram TDAs of tranexamic acid for 4 days, not exceeding 4 grams per day. And in US, the recommended dosage is quite similar. It is 1.3 grams TDS for 5 days. As tranexamic acid is renally excreted, dosage reductions are recommended for patients with renal impairment. Contraindications to its use would include that of active thromboembolic disease, history of thromboembolism, intrinsic risk for thrombosis, severe renal failure, and also hypersensitivity reactions. Currently, there exists a lack of health economic analysis for the use of tranexamic acid in the treatment of heavy menstrual bleeding. In view of that, NICE Guidelines has actually developed a model to evaluate the cost-effectiveness of its treatment based on quality-adjusted life years. So for the comparison of tranexamic acid relative to placebo, tranexamic acid provided an additional quality-adjusted life years, but this definitely came at an additional cost. In comparison to NSAIDs, tranexamic acid was actually more superior, providing more quality-adjusted life years at a lower cost. And in compared to levonorgestro IUS, tranexamic acid was slightly inferior, providing fewer quality-adjusted life years at a greater cost. In view of this, our team has also come up with a cost of treatment um, based on the recommended guidelines in KKH and also the cost which we obtained from KKH Pharmacy. So these are the costs. Um, tranexamic acid and midroxyprogesterone acetate actually came up slightly higher in the cost rating, involving $288 and $300 per year respectively. Marina, norethisterone and methanamic acid were slightly cheaper now. I'd like, to, I'd like to now touch on a critique of this paper. A comparison of the trials in this paper was actually based on menstrual blood loss as the sole outcome measure. We felt that this was insufficient as there was no comparison of other outcome measures such as relief of dysmenorrhea or irregular menstrual blood loss. Also, the cost of treatment was only based on financial cost as the sole comparison measure. Our team feels that the cost of treatment should also include the complications, retreatments, or follow-up time. Additionally, there were no studies which explored the use of tranexamic acid in a combination therapy, such as tranexamic acid with methanamic acid or tranexamic acid with progestogens. So in summary, menstrual blood loss was significantly more decreased with tranexamic acid than with NSAIDs or oral progestogens. However, the reduction in menstrual blood loss achieved by levonorgestrel releasing IUCD is actually greater than that of tranexamic acid. With regards to quality of life, 81% of users of tranexamic acid report to be satisfied or very satisfied with its results, and 94% perceived that menstrual blood loss was decreased or strongly decreased. Also, we have just now mentioned that tranexamic acid is a generally well-tolerated medication with mild adverse side effects and it is relatively cost-effective. This is the end of our presentation. Thank you.